The labor movement is pushing for tougher measures to strengthen the Singaporean core of workers amid the pandemic. In his speech opening the parliamentary debate on the president's address, Labor MP Patrick Tay called on authorities to consider further tightening requirements for hiring foreigners in certain sectors. That's even after this criteria was raised across the board for the second time this year. Cheryl Lin reports. The Manpower Ministry recently raised the minimum qualifying salary for employment pass holders and for the first time it set an even higher bar for a specific sector, financial services. Now, the Assistant Secretary General of the National Trades Union Congress is urging similar action on sectors such as Infocom technology and professional services. That's because they generally have more firms on a watch list for potentially discriminatory hiring. It's among several suggestions he's making to strengthen the Singaporean core amid a pandemic that has driven concerns over heightened competition for jobs. We agree that as an open trade economy with low birth rates, importing foreign labour is necessary to address true labour resource gaps. However, as we have seen, there are still some 1,200 firms on MOM's watch list. Clearly, market failure exists in our current employment framework. We can and must improve this by knowing where to flex and where to tighten measures. Mr Tay also proposes removing preferential tax benefits for firms that continue unfair hiring or disallowing them from winning public sector contracts. On top of that, he's pushing authorities to explore turning certain guidelines on fair hiring into legislation. We need to reconsider the long-held notion of being regarded as not investment-friendly with legislation. The world has moved on to embrace sustainability and related environmental, social and governance legislation, which encompass fair employment. Similarly, fair employment legislation has not stopped the likes of London and New York from being vibrant financial centres. Mr Tay urges multinational corporations here to offer more global opportunities to Singaporean PMETs, but adds these employees must also step up to the jobs. Moving forward, he's calling on industries to refresh strategies by embarking on the second iteration of the industry transformation maps. In that journey, we should evaluate the reasons why Singaporeans are unable to fill these existing and future PMET jobs and roles and develop an action plan that combines both a sectoral and functional approach to rectify this for the longer term. In that respect, Mr Tay emphasised the importance of continuous upskilling and reskilling amid the great reset brought on by the pandemic.